Hi guys and welcome to my latest video. Um, today I'm going to talk with you guys about men's shoes. Now um, it's quite an interesting little topic because it's a good niche to, to have a bit of knowledge and information about um, because there's some good profit to be made from men's shoes. Um, like, like anything else, um, whatever niche you're into, whether it be vintage, antiques, whether it be uh, video games, clothes, trainers, shoes, whatever it is, um, it's good to have a bit of knowledge about about the items because it will just make you more confident when you're out there sourcing um, and it will also make you more confident when you list your item because you'll know what people want to see, what people want to know about the item um, and you'll know how best to describe it. So what I'm going to do with you guys is, is show you... Um, I recently got like a little haul of, of shoes uh, uh, in a little job lot, a nice little bundle. I paid like a tenner for this big sack of shoes and there were some fantastic shoes in there. And I've had a couple of sales out of that lot and I just wanted to share them with you and, and just tell you a bit of the differences between the shoes, etc. So maybe it'll be able to help you guys out. So I'm just going to switch over to the webcam browser view. Um, and there's a couple of things that I would, I'd, I'd like to talk about. So here, first of all, here is... Um, the first pair of shoes, you can see I sold them for £40, I was doing free shipping, I didn't really need to do free shipping, um, and I've gone back to charging shipping, I kind of dilly-dally a little bit, but I want to show you these shoes, these are by, um, these are finer by Horn, Horn Brothers was a brand that was quite popular in the, like, the 90s, and then they went into administration, they went into debt, but they made good quality, um, like, you know, handmade type English shoes, and these are a great example of the kind of shoe you want to be looking out for. Um, the the most obvious sign of whether shoes are decent or not is going to be where they're made. So these shoes are made in England. Um, you can just tell that they're, they're leather as well. Um, and you can see on the inside they usually will have some kind of a... Um, uh, like a like a name they often give these shoes like uh, the, the the range is named so these are the calculator which is quite a strange name um but you, you can see that they're really nicely put together uh, a nice color as well they're in good condition obviously condition is is key um but what's interesting is is in knowing also how to sell these so with eBay, obviously, it's a passive selling program. You're not actively out there selling your item to someone. So you need to have all the information that you think someone is going to want ready um, and relevant. So the search terms they're looking for. Now, if you look at my title here, guys, I've got the brand. So it's Finer by Horns. And I've put the color in brown and they're Oxford shoes. So people do know what Oxford shoes are. I didn't really know until I started selling shoes, but these are Oxford shoes. And... Um, so it's good to know the difference between an Oxford shoe, between a Derby shoe, between a Brogue, between a loafer, things like that. It, it's quite easy to find out. And, um, you know, these are brown Oxford shoes. They're a UK size nine and a calculator. And I just put vintage because it's a bad habit. Um, I wouldn't recommend just putting vintage in on the end of everything. But these are, in a way, on Etsy, you could sell these as vintage because they're over 15 years old, I think. But now the, the interesting thing is these went all the way to Japan and um, buyer paid for the shoes and then they would have paid like 20 pounds on top for shipping via the global shipping program. Hence, I know I really shouldn't be charging or offering free delivery on shoes like this, but I did and, and it was a mistake I made. But so I hope that kind of gives you an idea of the kind of shoe that, that is of interest. Now, Horns isn't, uh, it's not Churches, it's not Chaney's, it's not Lokes. Those are the more popular brands. Um, you know, this brand is defunct, but um, a quality brown Oxford shoe made in England still holds a lot of sway. And um, someone out in Japan really appreciates it and um, bought them and, and, and is happy with them. Um, moving on. Next pair of shoes. Now, here is a pair, another pair of shoes. And again, I'm pretty sure these went to Japan as well. So Japan is popular. Two different customers, both to Japan. And these are a pair of black um, shoes. Uh, these are Desborough shoes. Again, this is an old brand. And again, the telltale signs. It says made in um, Britain on the inside. And you've got a little code there with the size. And you can just about make out on the sole where it says hand, um, like hand finished. It says um, it's difficult to sell, but the, the leather soles, leather uppers, the leather shoes, quality shoes by Desborough. Again, not a brand that's going to be instantly recognizable to everybody. 
um, but again, popular. And if you look at my title on here, again, Desbra Black, and these are Derby shoes. So the difference between a Derby shoe and an Oxford shoe um, is good to know because you'll be able to describe your shoe a lot better. Now, uh, the difference between a Derby and an Oxford shoe is actually, let me just, um, let me just show you that actually. Um, so here is a Derby shoe and here is an Oxford shoe. So what you want to look out for is you can see that on a on a derby shoe, the where the eyelets are, where the laces go in, that flap is just open on the outside. It's not sewn in on as part of the shoe. If you look at these shoes, you can see it's all seamless. It's just stitched in together with the shoe. So it's not like a the, the, it's all there. It's not like a an actual open flap. You can see the flap is over the main area of the shoe so I'm, I'm sure these have all got proper terms for them i don't know them because i'm not like a complete um knowledgeable uh, fountain of knowledge on shoes but i know enough to describe them accurately and to be able to get sales um of these shoes so you can see the difference that's an oxford shoe it's all stitched in the eyelets there the, the, that patch there is all stitched in part of the shoe derby shoe it's kind of open as it were so that's the difference between the shoes and again these went to japan and um, again the buy paid extra for global shipping so um you know in another example there really of, of what to expect when selling shoes third example of a pair of shoes um these were pretty hideous these are by russell and bromley again these are you can tell these are derby shoes because you can see that that section there with the eyelets is not stitched in with the main body it's it's kind of the laces bring those pieces together and you can see these are pretty horrendous looking brown shoes but they're vintage russell and bromley new bond street the highland range size eight and they sold believe it or not i feel like i may have underpriced them i'm not sure but they sold within like a couple of hours of me listing them for 40 quid um and went to some guy in cambridge or university like trinity college or somewhere like that i don't know but but nice pair of shoes for someone there so again being able to describe the shoes is very important final item I'm going to show you this. This is cool. This is a John Lobb real horn shoehorn. I thought initially it would have been worth a lot more money, but it wasn't. I think £20 was about the right amount of money for this. It's just a shoehorn, but it's real horn made uh, made in Kendall, and it says John Lobb on there. Well, Job, John Lobb is a very exclusive brand, and £20 for a shoehorn, and again, it went to Japan. So a couple of things to, um, to, to kind of note from that. Um, three out of those four sales that I've showed you all went to Japan. Um, so obviously they appreciate, uh, you know, good quality English shoes. Um, so it, that's just something to bear in mind. So if you're selling these shoes and you, for whatever reason, you're not offering international shipping. Um, I know some people don't offer international shipping. You're pretty much, you know, losing out on a market that loves this item. Um, you know, the, in England, there's an abundance of, of good quality English shoes. So um, buyers from England are going to be a lot pickier, a lot choosier. You're going to probably find it tougher. But by opening yourself up to the world, you, either by using global shipping or by offering your own shipping rates, um, I found that three out of those four shoe sales, um, I, I count the shoe horn, shoe horn as well because it's to do with shoes, um, and, and, and more specifically, like quality English-made shoes, um, the, the Japanese obviously love it. Um, and, you know, I'm sure there's other countries out there that will also appreciate these these items. And so, you know, make sure you're on the global shipping program or you're offering your inter international shipping rates. And also, you know, learn these little terms um, if you can, because it's worth knowing. It's worth it makes it so much easier to describe um, a shoe when you know how to describe it. When if you know you've got a wingtip shoe or whether you've got brogue shoes or whether you've got an Oxford or a Derby shoe, it just makes it much more easy for the buyer to find. Um, and it will just make your life a lot easier as well in terms of, of, of making sure your item is visible um, to buyers. Anyway, guys, um, that was like a little bit of info that I've picked up over my short time selling shoes. I hope you found this video useful. If you've got anything more to add, please take the time and, 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 and add any information you may have in the comment section. If you've got any comments about the video, positive or negative, please leave them in the comment section below. And obviously leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. I really appreciate that. Thank you guys for watching the video and I'll see you next time in my next video. Thanks for watching.